Hi, my name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. This time we start in Unity because this time it's only a quick tip about bringing terrain data from Houdini scenes into a game engine, here in this case Unity. Building terrains inside of a game engine like Unity is made with different approaches. You can add, for example, polygon objects, you can use for example, patches from libraries like Quixel Megascan, or you can use the native terrain object inside of Unity, which is the topic of this lesson here. So I want to bring here now a terrain object into my scene graph. I get rid of the cube. You can go here to Game Object, 3D Objects, Terrain. And after you've added this, you see a really big plane here. And this plane has the size of, I think, 500 units or 500 meters, if you like. And the normal way people start building terrains inside of this setup here is that the terrain itself has a component, a terrain component. And here you see different kind of sculpting tools, which you can use with different brushes. So if you, for example, select now this brush here with a soft outline, can change here the brush size and the opacity here and then you can draw here on the surface and you see you sculpt here your terrain a really really tedious kind of work if you really want to have a nice terrain and at this point we want to go to Houdini because since version 16 we have really nice terrain tools there and we want to bring the data over to Unity. If you look a little bit deeper into this terrain object here, you will see that not only the sculpting here is important, but also the texturing. If you go here to this brush here, you are in the environment for painting textures. And to paint a texture, you have to add it here into the stack. So it's not possible with this object at the moment to go here to the surface textures and take, for example, grass with hills and drag it over here or here, you see it doesn't go into the terrain. The reason for this is a technical one. You have to add here your textures with this add texture button. And if I go here and say, I want to have grass, for example, and I want also to have another texture, let's take sand here. You have now a stack here where you can decide with which of these brushes you want to paint and the first texture here is used here for the terrain itself. And if I want to have now sand here, you have to select this here, take another brush and if you brush this here now, you brush in sand, you get something special which is named a splat map. What is a splat map? If you go here and save this scene for a moment, save scene, and go here into your asset folder, you see under the terrain encapsulated here is a splat map. And this splat map here is like a masking system. You see which kind of material is placed where on the terrain. You see everything is red. So this is the first channel of the splat map and the first texture is applied to it. And the first texture we had here was the grass. And the second texture here is sand. And if you look here, this is, yeah, the second one, it's G. So if you have green here on the mask, this is the second one. And you see you have four channels here for this flat map. And this is the assignment of the material. And we can also deliver splat maps from Houdini over to Unity. In the moment, you need a little script to go into this flat map and exchange it with your own splat map. This is a topic for another tutorial, but yeah, this is the background, how the terrain object inside of Unity works. In this tutorial, we want now to talk how to get here now our terrain from Houdini into Unity. So let's switch over to Houdini. And we built a really fast terrain here. If you want to learn more about terrains, there's an excellent tutorial series from Rohan. So there you can learn this. So we start with a high field. A shortcut for the tab menu is HF because everything what is high field comes up with HF and we add a high field node here. And if you dive into this, 
you see there's a high field generator. And if you frame this, you see this high field is also really big. The size of the high field is here. This is in meter. So for my case, I only want to have 500 to 500 meters. And if you think back to Unity, for example, you have the same settings here under this settings menu here. If you go here, terrain width and height, these are 500 units, which are also 500 meters, I think here, width and length and height. Yes, yeah, the height later of this field. So switch back. The next thing I want to do is here, we want to add a little bit of uh, terrain here. So press HF again. And like I've said, you get the whole high field nodes here. And for my case, I want to have a high field noise. So we enter this here and place this node. Okay, this is our first high field. And normally we don't build everything from one noise. So we start really easy normally with something more sharp. For example, you can change here the noise type. And I want to have something sharp like Wally or here some of the other flavors of Wally. Let's take this one here. Yeah, or this one. Yeah, I like here these sharp edges. I decrease here the octaves a little bit, lower the amplitude. We can change the element size so that you get something, for example, like a valley. If you want to move this here around, you can use here your offset and you move it until you see something you like, for example, something like that. And then we can go here and distort this a little bit to get rid of this CG log. So this distortion node now takes everything. And with the help of noise types like curl, you can change here these straight lines to something more organic. And then you can stack other noises on top of this, like I've said. There are other tutorials which are really useful for this to learn how this system works. The real power comes in if you now add polygon objects as high field data or you can paint masks and generate masks and so on. But in the next step, we want to have a little bit more a natural look. And for this, we normally use the high field erode node. In the high field erode node, we simulate how wind, weather, water, behaves with the surface. And in this node, we have this visualization where you can tell the system which layer you want to see here as a visualization. And if you want now to simulate after you have made your settings here, you use here the play bar inside of Houdini. And now you see more and more, we get something more realistic with bad rocks and water pits and so on. If you found a frame which you like and you want to get rid of the visualization for a moment, you can go here to this tab and deactivate the visualization. You see this here looks much, much more natural than yeah our first frame. So like I've said, the road is really, really powerful. Also, we get a whole bunch of masks with this you see here we have masks for bedrock, water, the flow, debris, and so on. If you now want to have a look how this maybe looks later inside of Unity, you can use the high field quick shade node. And the quick shade node makes a visualization, but you can decide which layers you want to use and which texture you want to add. So we start here with the base texture, and I load now into my system the same surface textures I have here in Unity. So we start here, for example, with sand. So sand albedo. It's a PSD file. And you see now the sand. If it's too big, you can go here to the UV scale. It's the same like in Unity and scale it, for example, to 10 in every direction. So this is sand. And if you want to add now something new to it, for example, you want to see later where the cliffs are or water are, you can use other textures here. So go to texture number one, you add a texture. If you don't have a texture, you can 
also use a tint. For example, I select blue here because I want to make water. And here under terrain masks, you can now go into the system and say, I want to see the water. And you directly see this is the placement of the water later. These data we normally use for generating later splat maps. This is done mostly in the COPS network inside of Houdini. So we deliver the data into the compositing networks of Houdini, change the appearance of them and output them from there. I only want to show you here all the data is available for you. So we want now to output the terrain here. And for this, we normally use the high field output node. There are other ways we can go, but this is really useful. So go to the high field output node. And here you have now the file name, which you can add. And I save this here into my Unity project in a folder Houdini. And we name this, we want to have the high field. And now we can add a file extension. And Houdini has a whole bunch of file extensions, but what Unity needs is a raw file. And there's no raw file here in this list. So I want to convert the hybrid later. So I use a PNG here. And remember, PNG only uses positive values and it's uh, 8 or 16 bit. So we have to keep this in mind for the next settings. So we decide here which format we want to use. The high field inside of Unity is only one channel. So we switch here from RGBA to a single channel. And you see here the output layers change to one slot here, the red one. This is the first channel we use. And here we can now decide which layer we want to output. In our case, the height. So after we've added the height, we now have to decide here which data type we want to deliver. And remember, PNG don't have 32-bit. So we go here to 16-bit. And I want to have a 16-bit fixed here. So we have 16-bit now available. And to bring these values here, which we have for the height, into the 16-bit space, we have to remap the values here. Otherwise, you get clippings and we remap it without remapping. So we get a range from zero to one. And so everything which we see here is inside the 16 bit. Here we can now add the resolution. And this is the most important part here. Normally we take here a square shape. For example, you decide you want to have a 2K texture here. So if you now take your standard 2048 to 2048, you get a problem later in Unity. So let's switch back to Unity for a moment. And we will later read this into the system with import raw. And if you go a little bit up here, you see here the height map resolution. And if you hold with your mouse over this, you see the resolution should be power of two plus one. And this is the important part here. So if you want to have a 2K map here, 2048, normally you have to add one in every direction. Okay, that's done. And I think we are ready here. We can press here save to disk and Houdini does its magic of saving out this high field map, but we can't use this high field map in the moment inside of Unity. So if you go here and try to import raw, go to your assets, Houdini, you see we can't load PNG at this point. Okay, so we have to convert this now to raw. And for this, I use here in my example, Adobe Photoshop. You can use other image editing programs which support raw later. We go into this, you see here our channels. It's only one channel, it's gray. And then we go to save as into the same folder. And here is Photoshop raw. We press save and then comes an important question. We are asked here for the byte order. You can select Macintosh or IBM PC. It's not important what you select, but it's important that you use later in Unity absolutely the same settings. I'm on a Mac here. 
So I select here Macintosh, I click OK. That's it. And now we can go here to Unity and we go to our terrain settings, import raw, go into our asset folder, select here the high field raw, press open. And in this dialog, we can check now the settings. You see the depth is 16 bit. The width and the height is recognized correctly. 2049, that's correct. And here's the byte order, which I have to switch to Mac. Sometimes you have to flip your Mac. In my case, I think it works. And here's now the terrain size. This is the width, this is the height, and this is the length. And we had in Houdini 500, so I stay with 500 to 500. And for the height, it's not exactly, but it sometimes helps if you go here to the high field output node, hold down your middle mouse button, you can see here the size is 500 to 500 and the height is around 160 meter. So we have something which we can use as a starting point, something like that. And then we can click here to import. So that's the result we get. You see, it looks really similar to the high field we had in Houdini. So now you can tweak if you want your settings here. And here's the terrain height. So if you want to change this here, you can test it. 158 meters looks good for me, but if you want to have it a little bit flatter, you can change it here. But now you exactly get the result you had in Houdini. Now normally comes the next part that you want to have now your splat maps. Like I've said, it's a bigger topic and this is something I do if you need this here in another tutorial. I hope this workflow helps you and if you have questions, leave a comment. I hope you have fun with this. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train.